My name is Richard Small. I um, served with the United States Army as a general medical officer from the fall of 1968 to the fall of 1970. After five weeks of training at Fort Sam, I was uh, shipped off to Vietnam, which I had volunteered to do, although I had really very little choice. I could have given more time and gone to Germany, but when they asked me on the forum where it was I wanted to serve, I put down Southeast Asia, because that's where the action was. There's no point in serving if you're not going to go where you're needed. Uh, most everybody who graduated medical school in 1967 uh, did some form of service or left the country. Worked on the Indian reservations or wherever. Um, again, that's not where the action was and that's not what I had in mind. Um, it was uh, a very interesting, rewarding, and terrifying experience. Spent the next year <clears throat> From November 2nd, which was my father's birthday, of 1968 till November 1st of 1969, uh, as a medical officer, uh, boots on the ground in Vietnam. Was assigned to the, the 3rd Brigade of the 82nd Airborne when I got there. Served the first three months at Brigade Headquarters in Camp Red Bull, which was in Saigon. And then the next six months as a battalion surgeon with the 1st of the 505. It was one of the battalions that made up the 3rd Brigade, three battalions. <clears throat> one of the experiences that happens to well, I think, Go back just a minute. When I was boarding the airplane in uh, Cleveland to go to uh, Texas, my dad was the last person who spoke to me, and he said, "There is good to be found in all things," which uh, I didn't receive completely enthusiastically at the time, but that was already an integral part of who I was because he's the one that brought me up. Um, a couple weeks after I settled in at Camp Red Ball on a Wednesday morning, a fellow showed up from a local support group. Uh, the, there was a captain, uh, his name was Casey, and he'd served up north in Tet with 101st, and uh, it got to the point where he wasn't or wasn't comfortable with what was going on, and they weren't comfortable with him. So they put him out with this uh, advisory unit, and there was the sergeant, and there was a radio guy, and an interpreter. And <clears throat> the sergeant said to me, um, "You're coming with me." Today and I said, uh, and I took a look at him. He was not clean shaven. His uniform was a bit rumpled, and I had no idea who he was. And inside my head, I said, "I'm not going anywhere with you." Uh, but he explained to me that it, that the fellow that had been in the spot before I was there was part of the MedCap program that, that Len referred to, the Medical Civil Action Program where a doctor would go out with, uh, to a village and, and do a clinic. So I said, well, I'll check with my people, come back next week. And he came back with a clean uniform and clean shave. And, and I said, okay, I'll go with you. The interpreter was a, was a young Chinese uh, man who had been born in Vietnam. His, Older brother and sister had both been born in China, and the family had fled China to Vietnam. And he was in the local uh, militia and, and was assigned as an interpreter to, to this uh, advisory group. Very intelligent, uh, uh, very well versed in English, 
And when we were done with the clinic that morning, he came to me and he said, I have a niece who uh, has been to Vietnamese and French doctors, so they've all told her and told the family that she has a bad heart and she's going to die. Would you see her? And I said, well, I'm not a heart doctor. I'm a general doctor. He said, yeah, I know, but I want you to have a look at her. And I asked him a few questions. Can she lay down at night to sleep? And he said, no, she has to be propped up. I said, can she run? He said, no. I said, she squat, turn blue, yes. I said, she's got a bad heart. Um, I'm going to bring her over here next Wednesday morning. So I did. Uh, I went out again. In fact, I went out every Wednesday until I was reassigned to the uh, first the 505. And there were the, this Chinese couple and a little five-year-old girl was, was just skin and bones, obvious cardiac child. Um, and I got out my stethoscope and, and listened to her chest and, and just my heart started beating fast. My eyes got real big and wide because she had, it was a machinery murmur, murmur that I'd learned about in medical school that is the sound that a, of a patent ductus arteriosus. There's a connection between the pulmonary cir circulation and the systemic circulation that closes at birth. There's no air going into the lungs, obviously, in, in the womb. But as soon as you start breathing in there, there's air, and you don't need the blood from the the left side of the heart, which is pumping blood at high pressure to the body. You need the blood from the right side of the heart, which is smaller. The heart is not like that, it's more like that, because the right side of the heart is smaller and it pumps blood at a lower pressure. If you don't, if that doesn't close, then you've got systemic pressure blood going to the lungs, then you're going to die. Um, you live into your 20s. But if you close that off in, in childhood, then you've saved a life. And that's what this little girl had. And uh, I'm sure I wasn't able to contain my enthusiasm. Um, so I told the family, I'll get back to you. But we're going we're gonna to have this little girl go over to Third Field Hospital and be evaluated. So I went over. I tracked down the cardiologist. Uh, of course, I was an Army doctor, and he's an Air Force specialist. And his response to me was very similar to my response to the sergeant. Right. And I said to myself, I'll do whatever I need to do to get this guy to see this little girl. So I begged him, and he agreed. And I brought the little, we arranged, brought the little girl to the hospital. He took one look at her. This is a cardiac child. This guy might not be as crazy as I think he is. And he got down on his knees, got out his specialist cardiology stethoscope, put it on his, on her chest. And I will never forget him looking up at me after he did that with his eyes big full of respect. I mean, we, um, we, we gave her warming medicine, and put her on um, iron and digitalis to strengthen her heart. And I'm thinking, I've got to, how am I going to raise the money to get this little girl to, to Hawaii so we can operate her on her there? We did the surgery at Third Field Hospital and I tied the knot. Close, it was as big as that, the connection was as big as that. Just loop a suture around it, tie the knot, and it's not, there's no bullet going through it anymore. Wow. Piece of cake. And that was in Stars and Stripes, and in the hometown newspaper. And I have a, and I have a copy of that. Oh, good. At home. I have her picture, too. <laughs>